Hi, I'm Dan Krinas from the Leader of Learning Podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Make sure to check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com and get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. Support for this episode of the House of Ed Tech comes from my awesome supporters. If you're getting value from this podcast and want to support my efforts, just visit chrisnessy.com slash awesome. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of Ed Tech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 107 of the House of Ed Tech podcast. This is me using my public address announcer voice slash radio voice, but here we go. <laughs> Welcome again to episode 107. This episode features the 2018 House of Ed Tech Final Four, which I'm very excited to bring you because, again, this year was a little bit different from years past in each of the previous years that I did this type of episode for the podcast. And it's actually the oldest running set episode that I do because episode seven of the podcast was the first House of Ed Tech Final Four. But again, this year was completely different. If you're new to the podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you checked out this episode. Hopefully I give you a number of reasons to want to subscribe, stay subscribed, and continue to get some anytime, anywhere professional development on the go. I will throw in here that I am currently broadcasting this live in the Facebook group for the House of Ed Tech. So if you're not a member of the Facebook group, then you can't see what I'm doing when I sometimes pop in and do this. So if you want to join the Facebook group, go over to chrisnessy.com slash Facebook and be happy to let you into the community and you can kind of check this out. So I will say hello to Stella Pollard and JP Presavento who are watching me as I record this and I'll give them a wave. They can see it. You can't because you're listening after the fact, but that's okay. It's part of the beauty of podcasting and sometimes doing it live. Coming up in this episode, of course, the House of EdTech Final Four. After a month of voting and people filling out their brackets, I will reveal who has made the Final Four. I will have, of course, my EdTech Thought, which we're going to talk about the cost of free. An EdTech recommendation? Hey, you showed up for the right episode. There are four recommendations and things that I'm going to talk about in this episode that made the final four, but in regular episodes, quote unquote, each episode will feature a recommendation of a tech tool, tip recommendation, something of that nature. Uh, this episode also features, of course, the House of Ed Tech VIP, and this episode features VIPs. Now, before we get into that, the Ed Tech thought and the featured content, I did get some feedback that I want to share here at the top of the episode. So let me check over it with the House of Ed Tech answering machine. You have new messages. Hey, Chris, this is Derek from East Tennessee. I just wanted to reach out and say I love listening to your show and it's great. Uh, I get a lot of definitely a lot of big ed tech tips and uh, I just enjoy listening to your show. You have a nice uh, media voice and you're very calming to listen to and uh, your audio is amongst the the best of uh, a lot of the podcasts that I listen to. And I just want to say you've been an inspiration to me and in, in my teaching and in my career. And in fact, you know, the episodes that you did about starting your own podcast has inspired me to, to start my own podcast. And it's called uh, Top 10 Teaching. The 10 is T-E-N-N, as in Tennessee. And it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and finally just dove right in and you know uh, the show's going to focus on teaching practices, pedagogy, educational technology and and a lot more. 
So, um, you know, I'm hoping to branch out and interview a lot of people across the state and my district. And hopefully we get some traction going, uh, interview some people across the country and the world. And I'd love to have you on one day. And um, I just want to say you've been an inspiration and thanks for all that you do. And if it's convenient, uh, please check out my podcast and give me some constructive criticism. And again, that's Top 10 Teaching. Uh, and you can follow follow the podcast on Twitter at Top 10 Teaching. T-E-N-N. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, Derek, for one, sending in some voicemail feedback. I really appreciate that, and I love to play those on the episode. Number two, definitely everybody who's listening, go and join me and check out Derek's new podcast. There will be a link in the show notes. And Derek, I will say here on the House of Ed Tech that I'm going to take you up on your offer to arrange to to get onto your show, and I would certainly uh, look forward to doing that and helping you on your podcast journey, which I'm really excited that you are on. Congratulations on launching a podcast. And if you ever need anything, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our next voicemail message comes from Voxer. And let's say hello to Mike Messner. Hey, Chris, it's Mike. How are you? Um, Just wanted to call or Vox you say hi. I hope you had a great Easter. I'm getting ready to listen to the episode on uh, Instagram for educators, and I hope I learned a lot. Keep up the great work and uh, hope that we can stay in touch. Thanks a lot. Mike, we can certainly stay in touch. We're on Voxer. That's how the world works these days. Um, Hope you enjoyed that episode with Lindsay Stumpenhorst. Again, that was a fantastic conversation that I got to have with Lindsay and really inspired me to kind of up my Instagram game. Uh, I'm trying to do more with Instagram here on the show and also use it more still for personal purposes on my personal Instagram account. Want to connect with the podcast on Instagram? Uh, you could certainly do that at House of Ed Tech. And, and Mike, again, thank, thank you for taking time to Vox me. Um, hopefully, again, you got some value out of that episode. Please send another Vox or, you know, do speak pipe, call the hotline. Let me know what you thought of that episode, what you got out of it, and be happy to share your thoughts on the episode here on the show. Feedback is always welcome. Just go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback, and there are any number of ways that you can send feedback to me, and I'm happy to do that. So thanks again, Mike and Derek, for taking time to submit some feedback, and I'm happy to play that here on the show. Now, let us move on and let's head over to this episode's EdTech Thought. So for this episode's EdTech Thought, which the all the music in this episode is sports themed. So not your usual fare. So it's just fitting the, uh, the mood that I'm trying to create here. But this episode's EdTech Thought is titled The Cost of Free. Recently, another popular player in the world of EdTech and education made a sinister and troubling decision. Padlet, who I recently described as a platform and tool that I have personally put ahead of Flipgrid, announced that they would be changing what was available for free and what was paid on their site. Now, this change has angered many educators. Perhaps even you have been upset by this. Personally, I am neither surprised nor upset by this move by Padlet or any other company that makes this decision. While Padlet, uh, the Padlet team is a team of six people, Those people are not volunteering their time to produce, maintain, and improve their platform. It's their job. And many of us have simply benefited from their hard work and efforts to this product. CEO Nitesh Gohl recently described the Padlet situation as one where they gave away too much for free and that he's never been a good salesman. These comments were made on the TeacherCast podcast hosted by Jeff Bradbury, and I will link to the full conversation that Jeff had in the show notes for this episode over at chrisnessy.com slash 107. Now, to make sure we're clear, I began this segment with sarcasm. Why? Because this is what happens. Sure, I say all the time that free is my favorite four-letter F word, but I also realize 
that there is a business side to all of this. Keeping your product free eventually means you will go out of business. For example, I'm into podcasting, and there are any number of quote-unquote free podcast media hosts that pop up from time to time. You want to know what the average lifespan of a free podcast media host is? It's about 23 to 26 months. So watch out Anchor. Should you be upset by this? I'm not here to tell you how you should feel. You're entitled to feel however you like about this. I will say, though, paying for things that you believe in, that provide you and your students with a better experience, should be worth serious consideration for your dollars, or your district's dollars. If Padlet is your jam, then the current price tag could come from your daily coffee fund, or go out to lunch one less day a month. The point is, if there's something out there that's worth it, then find a way to make it work for your dollars. This is also not worth getting upset about because there is more than enough new blog posts out there with alternative recommendations. And if you insist on using free tools in your classroom, you're going to find new tools to use in your classroom. But remember, what is the cost of free? As I go back to the title, you know, you have to be willing to maybe jump around from platform to platform or work within a lot of restrictions when you're using free services. But just remember also that when companies offer premium add-ons and and features, you know, they they do that for a reason. What really kind of gummed up Padlet here is they added really great features that to the surprise of as I quote more of the interview, you know, approximately 10 million users per month, you know, they gave away way too much of the milk. Nobody was willing to, uh, you know, buy the cow, as it were. As you're choosing tech tools for your school and your classrooms, um, again, consider what it really means to use something for free. And don't be surprised if the price tag changes, because, you know, there is a cost for things being free. That's my EdTech thought. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the big reveal, the House of EdTech Final Four. So when we started this tournament a few weeks ago, at the start of March 2018, we launched a 64, quote unquote, team full bracket, just like the NCAA of EdTech tools and resources and websites. And we broke this tournament down into four actual regions. We had the Sandbox region, we had the Digital Media region, we had the Assessment region, and we also had the Communication slash Collaboration region. Now let's go around the bracket, and based on everybody who participated in the voting over the course of the last month, here are the results of all the voting. So I'm pleased to announce all the winners and those who made it to the Final Four here in 2018. First up, we have the Sandbox region. And the finalists in the Sandbox region were Equatio and Google Expeditions. Quick description, Google Expeditions is a virtual reality teaching tool. You can swim with sharks, visit outer space, walk through a museum, and more without leaving the classroom. There are close to 500 expeditions available and more in development. Quatio lets you easily add equations, formulas, graphs, and more to G Suite for Education apps and Microsoft Word. The winner between the two? It was a landslide for Equatio. And Equatio is a product of TextHelp.com. Equatio was made to help math and STEM teachers and students at all levels. Equatio lets everyone create mathematical equations, formulas, Desmos graphs, and more from your computer or a Chromebook. And creating is easy. You can type, handwrite, or dictate any mathematical expression with no tricky coding or math languages to master. There's a huge library of ready-made expressions to save you time, from simple formulas to complex functions. And when you're done, 
Just add the math to your document with a click. Equatio is absolutely free for teachers. They do offer pricing options for individual students, groups, schools, colleges, and districts, uh, and that can go as little as a dollar per user each year. New Equatio users, which could be you after hearing about it, get the first 30 days free, and you can try all of their premium features across all the platforms at no charge. After that, you can upgrade to a paid subscription to keep those premium features, or you can continue with a free version of Equatio. The free version gives you access to some features, but the paid features that you would probably be more interested in are speech input, handwriting recognition, support for math writing shortcuts, static graphicking, and latex input. I will include a link in the show notes for this episode that will take you to all of the features for the free and the paid version. And just head over to chrisnessy.com slash 107 to get the links. And congratulations to Equatio. You have made the final four from the Sandbox region. Next up, we have our digital media region. And the regional competitors were Book Creator, the Book Creator app, versus WeVideo. Book Creator is a simple tool used to create ebooks on iPads, Chromebooks, and via the web. You can create a book and publish it to Apple's iBook store or share it online with a built in EPUB reader. You can also share your book as a PDF and even print it. WeVideo allows you to make and share videos using cloud-based online video editing software, which you can use on Android, iPhone, iPad, Macs, PCs, and Chromebooks. The winner between Book Creator and WeVideo is WeVideo. WeVideo is the complete feature-packed video editing and digital storytelling platform for today's classrooms. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for any length of time, Episode 87 featured a conversation with my pal from North Jersey, Bruce Reicher, who is a Wii Video ambassador. And of course, I will link to that episode in the show notes for this episode if you haven't listened already. Or just go back in your podcast catcher and go back to episode 87 with Bruce. Fantastic conversation. You can quickly start projects in Wii Video with ready to use themes, motion titles, and unlimited use of the Wii Video Essentials Library of 650,000 creative assets. Of course, you can access it on the web, iOS, Android, and Chromebook, and that support lets your students start on one device and seamlessly continue on any other, whether it's at home, at school, anywhere. That's the beauty of cloud-based editing. WeVideo offers a vast palette of creative tools, including green screen technology, screencasting, voiceover, audio controls, text graphics, and so much more. WeVideo is also a partner of both Google Education and Microsoft Education. The robust G Suite and Office 365 integration ensures privacy, security, and makes it easy for administrators to provision and manage users, groups, schools, and districts. Now, if your classroom is project-based or you feature projects from time to time, projects, of course, allow students to demonstrate learning and skills across academic and technical disciplines. WeVideo makes it easy to manage teams while observing individual contributions. When I use the Chromebooks in my classroom, WeVideo is right there for my kids. And based on how I'm running my course this year, again, ninth grade world history, they're just about to get into here in this last part of the year where they're going to be doing video and even more with audio. And WeVideo is going to be right there for them to be doing that with. So, Congratulations to We Video. You are the winner of the digital media region, and you've made the House of Ed Tech Final Four. And now moving over to the other side of the bracket, let's take a look at the assessment region where our regional finalists were Kahoot and Google Forms. Kahoot, as you may or may not know, is a game-based platform that makes learning awesome for millions of people all over the world. You can sign up to create and play fun quiz-based games. Google Forms 
allows you to create surveys and quizzes on your own or with others in that great collaborative Google environment. You can choose from a variety of beautiful pre-made themes or create your own. And you can analyze the results in Google Forms with Google Sheets. And the winner, in a landslide victory, very lopsided, to be quite honest, (laughs) Google Forms was the winner here. And Google Forms, in addition to toppling Kahoot, Google Forms allows you to get answers fast. You can manage event registration, whip up a quick poll, collect email addresses for a newsletter, and use the built-in quiz and grading functionality. You can choose a variety of question options from multiple choice to drop downs to linear scale, multiple choice, radio checkbox, short answer, long answer, here an answer, there an answer. (laughs) You can also include images and you can even use YouTube videos for your questions. Now, I've used Google Forms for quizzes and assessments in the past, and I've run countless sessions on how to integrate Google Forms into the classroom. You can use Google Forms as an exit ticket collection tool. And this is a very popular use for many teachers. And the whole quiz thing is really catching on nicely. Because of the seamless integration with Google Sheets, the data you collect can also be used in other ways through a selection of add-ons for forms and sheets together. Now, one person you should connect with about taking your form and sheet usage to the next level is my pal, Adam Schoenbart. Adam is a vice principal in Connecticut. He's been on the show a couple of times already, and he is a whiz with forms and sheets. Make sure you connect with Adam on Twitter. He is at Mr. Schoenbart, and that's M-R-S-C-H-O-E-N-B-A-R-T. And I have nothing. I mean, it was it was a it was very lopsided, folks. <laughs> uh, it was it was a slaughtering by Google Forms over Kahoot. So there you go. Let's, let's head over to our last region and check out the winner in the communication and collaboration region. So again, our last region is the communication and collaboration region, and our regional finalists in this region were Google Classroom and Remind, formerly Remind 101. Google Classroom is a free Google app that lets educators like you create classes, distribute assignments, send feedback, connect with parents, grade assignments, leave feedback, and allows you to see everything in one place. Remind is the popular tool that helps teachers Students, parents, clubs, coaches reach people via text message and send reminders. A very popular tool. But in another lopsided victory, congratulations to Google and Google Classroom. Again, Google Classroom streamlines assignments, boosts collaboration, and fosters seamless communication to make teaching more productive and meaningful. You can set up a classroom in minutes, and in no time you can manage assignments, communicate with students and their guardians in one convenient place. Let me just tell you this. Make sure your students get the app, eliminate excuses in your classroom, and make sure they download the Google Classroom app. Even if you're their only teacher who uses it, that in and of itself makes it worth it. Now, is Google Classroom perfect? No. But here's the great thing about really anything Google education related. Their development team welcomes feedback. So do not be afraid and make sure you submit feature requests when you come up with an idea. Now, many of you are always asking Google Classroom to integrate the grade book and make it a full, robust learning management system. And as far as I can tell and the people that I talk to, that's never going to happen. But, I mean, keep asking because you just never know. So to recap, the 2018 House of EdTech Final Four. We started with 64 ed tech tools, websites, resources, and we've narrowed it down to the final four. So congratulations to Equatio, WeVideo, Google Forms, and Google Classroom. Now, if you're listening and you're thinking, well, Chris, why don't you let us know who the ultimate winner is? Well, 
that's not for me to decide. I'm not here to tell you what the best tech tool is. I'm just here to present them to you and let you decide. So you go out and you use these tools and then you report back to me and let me know what you think the best tools are. So that concludes this year's House of Ed Tech Final Four. I hope to see you all again next year. And who knows what this tournament will look like in 2019. But I do know this. You'll be able to vote and participate and engage. And we've got a whole year to explore whatever new technology comes our way and becomes popular or useful or valuable. Or we'll see what doesn't make it. If you go back and you look at previous House of EdTech Final Fours, it's interesting to see that there are some tools that no longer exist that I was once very high on. So that's some food for thought. With that, let's uh, move over and meet the House of EdTech VIP, VIPs for this episode. So I, I sort of lied because I did say when I started this episode that all of the music would be sports themed and I ran out of sports clips that I was able to acquire. So that's why we didn't use it in, to get to this segment. But that's neither here nor there. Let's meet this episode's House of Ed Tech VIPs. Congratulations to Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. These are the two guys who are the reasons that this year's House of Ed Tech Final Four was completely different. Eric and Nick approached me about six to eight weeks ago, and they approached me about collaborating on this year's tournament and came up with the idea of putting together the actual field of 64 EdTech tools and having you vote on your favorites leading up to this very episode. Nick and Eric are both teachers from Hopewell Valley Central High School right here in New Jersey. Nick is a chemistry teacher who flips his classroom, and Eric is a biology teacher turned tech specialist. Now, the other thing that makes both of these guys unique is Nick and Eric started a podcast, and I'm happy to share a piece of their podcast right here, which is called Got Teched. And here's a little clip of their show. As I'm recording this, they have three episodes out for you to listen to, but here's a preview and you can get to know Nick and Eric a little bit better. I'm just a, first and foremost, I'm a teacher. Uh, I've been doing it for nine years now. I teach uh, high school chemistry uh, in uh, New Jersey. And I think kind of what brought me down this road of trying to spread the word on tech ed is, is really just as a science teacher, and you can, you can agree or disagree with this, but I, I think you end up just sort of using a lot of tech as part of the normal job. There's so, these days, there's so many simulations out there for science and, and even math now that it just kind of came natural. And we sort of found that we were doing a lot of tech stuff anyway. So as, as the years have gone on, kind of build this catalog of things. And nine years in, uh, you have all this stuff. It's like, oh, man, I kind of, you know, I know some good things to do and I have some ideas. And you sort of just want to start to tell people about it. I've always been interested in PD. Same with you guys. I know we've done some stuff together in the past trying to tell people about not just technology education, but all kinds of stuff. So that's been a big part of this too. And a podcast for me is just kind of like a really, like a unique way to do that. I began teaching, I guess it was 15 years ago, which is absolutely absurd. It's gone by so quickly. Uh, Fif wait, wait, 15 years? Yeah, I've been here at Hopewell for 13 did two years prior to that. I started flipping the classroom probably, I don't know, seven or eight years into my teaching career. And before then, I was trying to find ways for them to use technology on their mobile devices or anything that I could get my hands on, really. Uh, I remember trying to develop a, a way of projecting the microscope up on the uh, big screen up oh, front. Yeah. I'm currently in the middle of my doctoral studies for uh, digital transformation in education. And that just really increased my interest into pursuing this more full time. I started to get the itch to make that jump. So I switched over to media and tech specialist over in our school library. Since then, I've been working with teachers to integrate things such as escape the rooms, both digital and physical ones, 
you and I did an amazing race that was pretty cool with QR codes. And then I started really branching out for professional development, not only online professional development, but also virtual, such as the EdTech Team Virtual Conference, which uh, I shared with you. It was very cool. We had cool. a lot of very good professionals on there, and they gave a lot of good expertise. And then I branched out a little bit to Eric Kurtz's uh, blogs and other blogs like that. His is Control Alt Achieve, and I find that as an amazing resource that I pass on to a lot of people. That's a little bit about us. We're going to have a, a good show developed. We're not going to place a time on it, uh, a length per se of per episode. We're going to go until it feels right. Yep. Uh, but we'll get the uh, schedule out as to how often we're going to produce these. We're going to shoot for once every two weeks, and we hope you guys come back and uh, check us out. Definitely go and check out the Got Teched podcast. Their website is gottech.com, and that's G O T. T E C H E D dot com. And of course, connect with their podcast on Twitter. Got Tech Ed is the easiest way for me to say it. So again, name of the podcast is their Twitter account. Uh, and connect with each of them on Twitter. You can connect with Geis as he goes by on Twitter at Geis Got Teched. And you can connect with Nick on Twitter at Nick Got Teched. Congratulations, guys. Thank you for all your help with the 2018 House of EdTech Final Four. And also congratulations, you guys are the House of EdTech VIPs. So thanks again for checking out this episode of the House of EdTech podcast. Thank you again to Nick and Eric for helping me put together a bigger, better House of EdTech Final Four. Thank you to Derek, and thank you to Mike for sending in feedback. Really appreciate that. Keep the conversation going. I'd love to connect with you and hear your thoughts on the House of EdTech Final Four this year and any episode you listen to. For this episode, you can grab the show notes at chrisnessy.com slash 107, or you can go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback to find the multitude of ways that you can reach out and share your thoughts with me. Now, if you enjoy the House of Ed Tech, I'd like you to do one huge favor. Tell somebody else about this podcast. If you share on social media, use the hashtag House of Ed Tech. The show is on Twitter, at House of Ed Tech. I'm also trying to rock it a little bit on Instagram, at House of Ed Tech. I'm at Mr. Nessie on Twitter. So, hey, mention me, share the show. I know so many of you do that, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to, you can also consider becoming an awesome supporter of the podcast. Many thanks to Eric Kurtz, who you heard about just a while ago from Control Alt Achieve is his awesome website. Dan Gallagher, Peggy George, Jen Giffen, Mark Grindel, Jeff Herb, JP Presavento, Scott Titmus, and Brent Warner. Thank you for all of your support. I really appreciate it, and you are helping me do some things here at the House of Ed Tech that I'm looking forward to announcing uh, in the next few episodes that are going to make life a little bit better and life a little bit easier. If you're interested, just go over to chrisnessy.com slash awesome. Now, the next episode of the podcast is going to be episode 108, because 108 comes after 107, and... I'm no math teacher. However, my guest is. On April 22nd, 2018, I am looking forward to bringing you an all-new conversation with the original Mr. Nessie. I have it planned in my head, but I haven't spoken to him yet. I think he'll say yes. He really enjoyed being here the last time, so I think we'll just make that happen again. So I'm looking forward to bringing another conversation with my dad, John Nessie. Until next time... Thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio. Your voice 
is right here. For more great content, go to voiceed.ca. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. The Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators. Podcasts by educators. For more, go to edupodcastnetwork.com.